Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV Profit Insights and we're here with a special conversation with Mr. P. R. Jay Shankar. He's the Managing Director of IIFCL and we're having this conversation right after the company announced its financial results for FY24 as of yesterday. Uh, now, the company has recorded a record number of sanctions. It has an ambitious target for the year to come and in fact a 20% CAGR growth in the next three years. Uh, to dive more into that particular conversation and to get some insights on where the company is headed. I'm talking to the main man himself. Sir, very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Janani. Sir, first to begin, uh, you had mentioned uh, to the media yesterday that in the last four years, the growth at IIFCL has been uh, a momentous journey, has been 45% alone. Now, it also coincides with when you had taken charge almost exactly four years ago. Um, what seems to have been, you would say, the biggest pivots, biggest changes you have noticed in the last four years, considering that you've taken a p the post at a time where the post had been vacant for quite some time back then. So uh, just to pick your brain on how you see this journey shaping up? Uh, well, uh, to begin with, I would say that uh, IIFCL, since its inception in 2006, has been, uh, you know, uh, journeying uh, alongside the uh, Indian infrastructure sector, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, vagaries of the infrastructure sector has always been uh, more or less uh, coterminous with our own uh, vagaries. Mm. So. Uh, the last four years post-COVID has been uh, one uh, very, very uh, momentous uh, uh, journey for us. Uh, considering that the government's push for infrastructure uh, became all the more aggressive, and mm. uh, we have seen a number of reformative measures in the road sector, in the power sector, in uh, various other uh, sector, subsectors of infrastructure, uh, like the airports, ports, and uh, we, s we have seen the emergence of new sectors like the data centers, the electric vehicles, uh, battery charging, smart metering, and so many other uh, you know, new innovations coming into the infrastructure domain. And uh, these all have given opportunities on one side. At the same time, for lenders, we had uh, uh, the challenge of uh, formulating a very, very uh, uh, a strong strategy. That is what we had, uh, you know, uh, uh, developed, and uh, we worked according to the strategic plan. And uh, uh, the strategy involved uh, a holistic uh, reformation of the company, both from the uh, internal perspectives of the policy mm -hmm. and operations, as well as market orientation and. Uh, bringing the responsiveness of the company to the uh, market demands. Okay. So uh, we have been uh, able to successfully uh, uh, meet mm. uh, both these aspects mm. and uh, the results are before us. I want to pick it one of that in terms of the holistic growth and bringing it together. Um, there is also the plan of bringing the net NPA down, uh, in fact, uh, bringing it down to zero by this year. And at the same time, I want to juxtapose the loan book growth that you're looking at. Um, what, how do you weigh the risk considering that this, when it comes to infra, there's a high execution risk. There's always a delay when it comes to projects. How do you weigh the risks? The legacy issues of uh, the risks in the infrastructure sector have mainly dwelt uh, in the areas of land acquisitions, the approvals, dispute resolutions, arbitrations, and you know uh, resolutions, and uh, new products for uh, the uh, developers as well as for uh, the lenders. Uh, the uh, reformative measures which I just spoke about were mainly uh, in the areas of uh, the land acquisition and uh, the approvals and dispute resolutions. There we have seen the land acquisition law. Mm. The approvals have become much more speedier. Mm. There has, uh, the arbitration mechanism has been strengthened. Mm. We have an insolvency system. So uh, the uh, risks in the system have been contained to a great extent and uh, today we are seeing perhaps the stress in the sector is at its ebb. Okay. And uh, at the same time, IIFCL has been quite uh, proactive in its uh, addressing the, uh, uh, the legacy uh, stress which was uh, there in the infrastructure projects that IIFCL had sanctioned. And uh, we had a 
NPA of over 20, 22 uh, percent four years ago, hmm. uh, which were very, very concerning. And uh, we went about a systematic uh, process of uh, reduction of uh, NPAs. Hmm. And uh, over a period of four years, we have now been able to bring the net NPA to the level of uh, 0.46 percent. Hmm. Uh, and we hope that we will end this uh, current financial year hmm. with a zero NPA. Okay. I was going to pick it up, but I think you've already answered that question. Uh, but uh, considering that the bigger loan book you're targeting, what are some new sectors that you want to uh, sort of foray into? Um, if you were to talk perhaps new areas in infrastructure only, where do you think IIFCL could now rather step more forward into? Uh, the environment, the infrastructure environment hmm. has now uh, offered a number of opportunities. About a decade ago, hmm. uh, we, we were seeing the emergence, we were seeing the creation of infrastructure assets. Hmm. Uh, because infrastructure sector as a systemic you know, process has been just about two decades old. The first decade was all about creation of assets. And therefore, lenders were lending to greenfield assets then. Hmm. So there is where you know, all these issues came to the fore. The second decade, from 2014 onwards was all about uh, reforms on one side to you know, uh, bring about greater confidence amongst investors. And on the other side, the created assets also have become com uh, completed assets. Hmm. And the completed assets are now a sizable one, okay. uh, sizable investor class hmm. which have emerged. Hmm. And uh, uh, the inwits have been, uh, um, uh, as, a, as a new product, has been, uh, you know, ushered in. Okay. And uh, this offers a very good secondary market system for uh, hmm. infrastructure sector. Hmm. Now, the secondary market system uh, is important for any sector for uh, the liquidity. Uh, and uh, liquidity is good uh, in the sense that the entire fundamentals of the sector, say the sector can improve, mm. uh, including the control and uh, stability of interest rates. Mm. So that f phase is what we are seeing today. Okay. And uh, we have almost uh, 30 lakh crores mm. uh, being the size of the loan book of both uh, the NBFC, IFCs and the banks mm. put together. Mm. And of this, about 35 to 40 percent of the uh, assets are completed, underlying assets are completed assets. Okay. So we are seeing uh, almost 35 percent of the uh, 30 lakh crores mm. as the opportunity for uh, liquidity into the system, mm. which can bring about the stability in the fundamentals, mm -hmm. including the interest rates on one hand, mm -hmm. and uh, which can uh, offer the uh, necessary source of funds okay. for uh, uh, for generation of new uh, uh, infrastructure capacities hmm. uh, without addition of uh, you know uh, additional capitals okay no i asked this question also to uh, rather hint at will it be beyond project financing also and where exactly will be something we'll be looking at i come at this very specifically when we say the rating of the loan book for example um, as you go for a more higher rated uh, you know this one projects the pool of competitors also increases and the yields are low in that sense so uh, is diversification and to maybe different sectors also something on the annual Yes, because uh, uh, now continuing from what I, uh, you know, mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, the the system today offers tremendous opportunities for financial engineering mm. and uh, structured finance uh, aspects. Mm. The infrastructure lending architecture itself is poised to you know undergo a tremendous change, mm. and there is where IFCL is uh, you know uh, stepping forward. Mm -hmm. IFCL has always been known to be a leading innovative lender. Mm. Today we are adding the word leading innovative preferred infrastructure lender. So uh, uh, with the uh, profitability and with the uh, addition in our net worth, mm. uh, it has become all the more uh, uh, you know, possible to focus greatly on strategic and nationally important uh, uh, large projects for IFCL. And so the Gati Shakti uh, yes, national, the national investment pipeline, investment pipeline, the monetization pipeline, Gati Shakti. Mm. Uh, we are a, we are able to kind of uh, you know uh, look at uh, the uh, uh, systematic way in which the government has uh, you know devised a, 
a methodology for uh, uh, taking the infrastructure development forward. Hmm. And uh, at the same time, uh, the uh, new areas like the inwits, the bonds, they would play a very, very important role. So our focus is on uh, lending towards these areas and uh, ensuring that uh, the company uh, continues to play the to play its uh, you know role as the lead lender, yeah. uh, uh, leading infrastructure lender, most diversified infrastructure lender, because new sectors emergence also has thrown out opportunities for entering into new areas, and uh, we are doing that also in a very very uh, systematic way. So uh, it's a it's a whole lot of. Uh, uh, opportunities mm -hmm. and uh, both the developers and the lenders would definitely benefit at the same time the US users mm. the public general public because the public facilities are being created to you know ensure that India has that uh, level of uh, world-class in infrastructure that it deserves uh, while uh, walking towards uh, you know goals towards Vixit Bharat at this point, speaking of, when one speaks of lending, of course, the sources of financing is another topic I'd like to sort of jump into. Uh, and uh, green bonds particularly, and a maiden issue at that, was something that was talked about, stated for this year too. Uh, if I could understand at what stage this is, and perhaps what quantum you're looking at at this stage. Uh, green bonds uh, framework has already been put in place by IFCL. Uh, this was pursuant to the uh, green framework, uh, you know, um, which the government has uh, put in place and the disclosure that uh, the SEBI has recommended and uh, RBI also has come out with some green frameworks. Uh, but he, but uh, uh, as far as the market is concerned, hmm. uh, the identification and verification systems are yet to you know stabilize. Okay. We need a green taxonomy. Hmm. We need a better greenium if I may say, the premium that is required for, uh, you know, green bonds, hmm. that is still, you know, uh, not visible. Hmm. Uh, the uh, color of the bonds that are being issued today are more or less agnostic of any uh, uh, sectoral or uh, uh, color preferences. Okay. So, uh, the, uh, the, the, like elsewhere in the world, we have a significant uh, premium for green bonds. Hmm. We need to have a system of premium that has to be there, mm. which actually uh, you know enthuses uh, the issuers to go for such uh, 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 you know bonds. But yet we have, we uh, understand our responsibilities and we are trying to lead the system, mm. and we are trying to uh, go with uh, the uh, uh, the processes that uh, the government is uh, uh, featuring okay. for green bonds. Uh, so and we we see some time lag in this, but then yes. Uh, we will definitely look at uh, an issuance or two very soon. Okay, two, two follow-up questions on this. One, uh, in terms of what would be the tipping point or that uh, premium level, the green premium level, uh, that would be of interest. And when we say not, uh, perhaps immediately, when are we talking still FY25 or are we talking about uh, perhaps? Perhaps the, the premium could take some time, but then, you know, we there, there needs to be some responsible institutions such as ours which would need lead the process. Hmm. And uh, I don't see much of uh, things happening immediately, hmm. but we nevertheless we are going to have our issuances. Okay. Uh, both domestically, we are looking at domestic investors as well as global investors and global environment also. Hmm. So wherever we uh, are able to uh, uh, garner the best possible pricing, hmm. we will definitely uh, uh, you know go for that. Okay, but uh, on, on the quantum, uh, it was widely reported that See, perhaps this thousand year crores. Uh, our, uh, the quantum of funds that uh, we are looking to raise is about thirty thousand crores. Mm -hmm. So a part of it will definitely uh, be for uh, uh, a green uh, finance. Okay, and uh, uh, whether it would be domestic or whether it would be uh, the global, uh, you know, markets, that would depend upon the pricing. Okay. But not anything uh, less than uh, 3,000 crores. Okay, not less than 3,000 crores as green bonds. 
Okay. Um, another uh, form of bonds that you had also mentioned yesterday was the project bonds and how there's been an interest from 21-22, uh, IIFCL's uh, interest in projects bond has also increased. Renewable energy particularly was one you said. Um, there was an MOE that was signed between IRIDA and IIFCL uh, as of last year, September. Uh, just trying to understand um, Pursuant to that MOU, uh, would we see uh, maybe more IAFCL funding in IRIDA projects and where it stands currently? Uh, IAFCL has uh, been a very uh, uh, proactive lender uh, to all the projects uh, in the uh, renewable energy side, uh, whichever has been more or less uh, you know, uh, offered to us. Uh, and uh, IRIDA has been a very, very uh, uh, good partner. And the relationship with IRIDA has been very uh, uh, synonymous with uh, mutual growth. And uh, we have uh, financed IRIDA as well. We mm. have refinanced IRIDA. Mm. Uh, we have provided corporate finance to IRIDA. So, mm. uh, uh, so there is a number of, uh, you know, uh, there's a, there are a number of activities between the institutions, both these institutions. Okay. Uh, as far as renewable energy is concerned, uh, our books uh, are uh, close to the extent of almost uh, 18,000 crores today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it is, uh, it is a very, very significant uh, portfolio that we have, mm. which has attracted most of the multilateral agencies mm. to uh, look at IFCL as uh, uh, destination for their lending. Okay. And we have relationship with a number of multilateral agencies and we are uh, perhaps the leading borrowers for some of the, in, in respect of some of the Asian uh, multilaterals. Hmm. So uh, uh, we hope to further this relationship and deepen our uh, renewable energy assets uh, hmm. portfolio. And we would like to uh, uh, look at uh, the cost effectiveness Mm. and the longer term structures mm. out of these relationship. Okay. okay. Uh, slipping back into extra commercial borrowings, uh, wanted to understand, uh, it was mentioned yesterday that this would be something you've had stakeholder consultations, you've spoken to investors abroad, uh, this is something that's been in the works. Trying to understand what is the quantum, if at all, you're aiming out of the uh, amount that you had mentioned, 30,000 crores, how much of it are you looking at perhaps extra commercial borrowings? Uh, what would be that mix? That, uh, See, uh, for uh, we are look, we, today with a sanction of about 42,000 crores mm -hmm. and uh, a, a outstanding loan of about 52,000 crores, I think we need to, uh, we are looking at a, a, a growth with a CAGR of about 20%. Mm -hmm. And that level of growth uh, requires a number of, uh, you know, um, a basket of resources. And the basket of resources uh, also would greatly depend upon the cost effectiveness and uh, the yeah. term structures. Yeah. So uh, wherever we are getting the uh, maximum possible, uh, you know, um, uh, economies in the sourcings, okay. we would definitely look at that. Yeah. So external commercial borrowings is a very, very important uh, uh, basket for us, an important part of the basket. Mm -hmm. uh, we already uh, have multiple currencies uh, in our uh, uh, borrowing portfolio. Okay. We have the the yen. Uh, we have yen-based borrowings. We have dollar-based borrowings. We have uh, euro-based borrowings. Okay. Uh, all these currencies have their own, uh, you know, ups and downs. Uh, you know, based on their uh, uh, cyclical uh, mm -hmm. uh, effects. Uh, today, uh, there are some currencies which are doing very well, like the yen, and uh, we, we definitely are looking at the most uh, effective and most uh, efficient way of uh, you know, adding to our resources through these uh, borrowings, currencies. And uh, external commercial borrowings can mean uh, a little lesser uh, uh, you know, tenors, mm. but uh, it could uh, be more uh, easier in terms of uh, access and accessibility and uh, speed in borrowing. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, our relationship with multilateral agencies will continue, mm -hmm. and external borrowings through multilaterals mm -hmm. uh, will definitely be a mainstay uh, for uh, uh, IAFCL, mm -hmm. uh, even in the future. And at the same time, the domestic borrowings 
uh, we are we 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 have a very uh, uh, we have been very uh, frequent issuers now in uh, the domestic market, and uh, we would like to also uh, increase that frequency. Okay. And uh, we are looking at the stability in the uh, uh, interest rates and uh, the uh, uh, the conduciveness of the domestic market to our uh, uh, demands in funds. So okay. that will continue and we will keep What will be that level, considering that interest rates the way they are and they're expected to be on ice for some time at least now. Um, uh, so what would be that trajectory then uh, when it comes to domestic? See, we hope that uh, the uh, stability that uh, we expect would, uh, uh, would be there for the next one, one and a half years. Okay. And then uh, uh, we would again evaluate the process. Mm -hmm. So I suppose uh, the strategy is to be uh, as uh, uh, balanced as possible in the current uh, one year. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the next year again evaluate and go ahead for uh, uh, the fresh uh, you know, uh, targets for uh, sourcing funds from the domestic market. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to come at this at another level. One another topic that was spoken about yesterday was the geographical uh, division and looking at other branches. And I want to come at the Gift City branch. Uh, I understand there's a subsidiary already. IFCL projects. There is a subsidiary, but a branch uh, is that something on the anvil now? Where where does that stand? Yes. Uh, the uh, purpose of setting up our uh, uh, subsidiaries branch in Gift City was to uh, do a recce and. Uh, uh, have the necessary uh, relationships built with the institutions which are already there in the gift city mm -hmm. uh, through our advisory and consultancy efforts and uh, g gradually uh, make way for uh, a branch of IIFCL to uh, you know get imbibed in the gift city mm. uh, through this branch we would uh, obviously the that would uh, be only uh, uh, after obtaining the necessary approvals from the Reserve Adia. Bank. Uh, but once the branch is in place, the, ob the objective and the strategy would be to develop a triad between the Gift City, the London subsidiary, and mm -hmm. uh, Delhi. Okay. And this, these three uh, offices will uh, work together to ensure uh, cost-effective long-term funds mm -hmm. flowing into the Indian infrastructure sector Okay. And at the same time, deploy, making their deployment possible to the various uh, uh, segments of infrastructure sector. Okay. Uh, on the before I leave, uh, two questions. One on AIS. Um, you had also mentioned that um, having a subsidiary as the investor manager is one of the plans, and it's under active consideration. Uh, the alternate investment fund. So, can we get perhaps a sense on uh, what status this is at, and when we can see it? Uh, uh, the alternate investment fund uh, is uh, 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 a aftermath of uh, our uh, uh, strategizing and uh, as per our uh, the strategy uh, uh, document approved by the board, uh, we uh, are to uh, uh, formulate and uh, set up AIFs. We would we, we prefer to do that from the gift city because uh, for infrastructure, we believe that uh, alternate investment funds uh, the, would uh, need sourcing from uh, global investors, okay. and uh, it would be easier to uh, you know operate from the gift city, and it would be more convenient given the uh, okay. investor climate that is being uh, you know uh, propagated and uh, being developed in the gift city, and at the same time, uh, uh, IFCL hopes to play the role of the sponsor. Mm. And uh, we would uh, look at the first AIF uh, being a specialized green uh, uh, AIF okay. uh, towards uh, uh, supporting the sustainability projects. Okay. And uh, we would definitely look at uh, the other AIFs also. We would, we would ultimately, we would like to have a string of AIFs mm. uh, supporting. Uh, uh, specialized sectors okay. with firewalls or with uh, a, an approach that uh, you know um, that's more uh, uh, specialized towards uh, each sector and yeah. with different investment managers and uh, project managers managing the entire uh, set of uh, uh, assets and uh, investments yeah. so uh, going forward I think uh, this would be a very good architecture for infrastructure mm -hmm. lending 
Okay. So essentially, uh, the AIF will follow the gift city branch. Am I to uh, that we would prefer that because okay. of the uh, requirements of. Uh, uh, sourcing uh, which is necessary right. for infrastructure sector. So would this be sort of a possibility in H1 or is it uh, rather something you would plan for H2? The, this has been a strategy which has already been developed, mm -hmm. uh, which has already been approved by our FCL board and we have to uh, only operationalize that. Okay. So that, that would be, you know, uh, keeping the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the possibilities of uh, the uh, uh, favorable investment climate hmm. in India and I think uh, we are already at it we are evaluating various options okay. so if it happens in the H1 probably uh, I okay. won't be surprised so should should, should one thing maybe but we are hoping to have it at least this, this financial year okay this financial year but H1 not any particular month or yes. window no we have not kept any such targets okay uh, before I leave you, uh, the question on the IPO, uh, the much-awaited IPO, in fact, of IISCL. Um, in terms of uh, how much of uh, stake would be uh, sort of into the IPO, what would be the dates, something could tell us. See, actually, Janani, um, IISCL uh, intends to grow at uh, a CAGR of 20%. Right. This growth, uh, definitely, uh, today the CA, CRAR of IISCL is quite comfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, it can support this kind of a growth even for the next year. Mm. But at the same time, looking at the long-term requirements and demands of the infrastructure sector, uh, we definitely have to put in place various uh, uh, sourcing measures okay. and uh, capital uh, structure options are already under evaluation. Right. So different uh, options we are examining. Mm. And uh, definitely one of the options is to ensure that the government also it would be been benef beneficial to the government to also unlock uh, the value that has been created in the company. Okay. So uh, as and when we have the uh, you know options uh, finalized, we will okay. definitely come back to you. So it's still a wait and watch on the IPO date. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the stake percentage also? Uh, some hint you could give us perhaps? I, I would stop at that here. <laughs> uh, as and when we finalize uh, the uh, uh, the study and the kind of examination that we are going through at okay. the moment, okay. because there are many other options also, okay. how we can strengthen our sourcing of funds. So, so it's internal or with finance ministry? No, the uh, examination is all internal. Okay. And obviously, you know, there, the, this this needs to there needs to be a very very firm basis for okay. uh, you know going forward in this process. We will definitely uh, you know look at these. Uh, the, various, uh, you know, other options also. Hmm. And we'll come back to you when the uh, blueprint is ready. I think we will keep asking you also till sure, then. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, very many thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you.